Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Let's Learn the Futures webinar series brought to you by uh, Bursa Malaysia and managed by our company Life Champ. So we are very excited to see you again on this uh, Futures uh, webinar. So today we are going to talk about a very exciting topic, which is the my game for trading success. Now, as you know, your psychology, the trading psychology is one of the key components in the trading success. Not only you need to know uh, your strategy, you need to know your trading system well, not only you need to know your money management well, but also a lot of times we need to know yourself well. How do you manage your emotions when it comes to trading and how you can win uh, in the trading uh, game with a uh, you know, strong mentality. So today, our speaker will share with you the tricks in this uh, topic, okay, which is the trade my game for trading success. Now, as usual, disclaimer, whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that I give any buy or sell signal uh, to buy or sell any futures contract. So the long or short any futures contract, if you decide to you know do any trading decisions, you do it at your own risk. Now here is the BMD uh, webinar. We we have gone, you know, this is the twentieth session, so we have gone a long way. So uh, we only have two more uh, remaining for this year. Okay, wait. I think we have three more remaining for this year because uh, we have added on, decided to add on one more topic, which is on FM seventy. So these are the our remaining one with the FM seventy. So if you want, don't want to miss our web, uh, Bursa Malaysia derivative webinar, so these are the two days that you need to log. Uh, reserve, which is 10th of December and 17th of December, okay, where we will talk about uh, uh, money management and uh, risk management in the futures market in the Bahasa Melayu. Then we will talk about Fibonacci, Qi Huo Jiao Ying Liu in the Mandarin. So allow me to introduce the speaker today. So uh, uh, he is a trader and managing partner of Xmodius Trading Group a consultancy firm specializing in bespoke trading strategies and coaching for private and corporate clients in the equity commodity derivative markets. He has 24 years of experience in Malaysia's listed derivatives uh, industry. So before starting his own consultancy, uh, he held leadership positions in futures uh, brokering divisions of major investment banks in Malaysia. So he also served as the president of the Malaysian Futures Broker Association between 2018 and 2019. As a fervent believer in trader education, David has spoken in seminars and workshops to over 5,000 retail traders on trading Bursa Malaysia derivatives as well as the CME, SGX, and uh, uh, Hong Kong exchange markets. So his work includes the live trading, uh, live market trading sessions and webinars. So he is none other than uh, David Law. Okay, so welcome David to our session today. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we are very excited to have you here. All right, so let me just uh, give you the presenter control and you can, you know, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, I hope you can see my first screen time, now. First time we are seeing yeah. your webcam. All yeah, right. and a awesome. special request uh, <laughs> from Shane. I've uh, redecorated my room and got in all the equipment to uh, be able to live stream uh, through my webcam. So uh, I hope everybody's uh, seeing that camera going on. And it's the first time uh, since our last, this is the fourth, uh, so the last three times we didn't get a chance to do video. So um, uh, at least, uh, you know, um, do it once. It's not too late. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Shane, for the wonderful uh, introduction. Um, do you see my screen now? Is it been yes. shared? Okay, yeah. fantastic. And uh, so thanks, Shane, and uh, thank you, uh, of course, uh, Bursa Malaysia Derivatives for hosting and sponsoring this uh, program tonight. Uh, and especially all of you who have uh, come in to attend the, uh, the webinar, thank you, all of you, uh, for taking the time to come in. Um, this is the uh, fourth in the uh, four series, this last one, of course. And But tonight we have a very, very important uh, topic. We will be talking about the mind game for trading success. And this topic is actually a very, very huge and very wide topic. I was telling Shane before we started that uh, normally my classes for trading psychology is uh, is one whole day. 
right? Because uh, we go through a lot of exercises and all that. But never mind, it doesn't matter. This uh, next one hour, uh, we will take questions uh, after the uh, session as well. This one hour, I will share with you the most uh, critical concepts and the most essential, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, aspects of trading psychology. So this is like the fully, uh, very concentrated uh, dose of uh, uh, concepts in trading psychology. So hopefully, Ready, get your pens ready and get a, a notebook ready uh, to write down some notes uh, if you want to. Um, there's, of course, uh, the uh, the uh, video will be shared. Uh, it's uh, going to be uploaded and you can uh, go in and revisit the videos. And if you, in case you, uh, you couldn't answer, understand some of the concepts, uh, as well as the last three uh, sessions that we had previously uh, will be uploaded in Bruce's uh, website and also Life Gems, uh website. The links will be provided so you can go back and see those uh, sessions as well. All right, so um, let's get on with it. Uh, hold on, let me get this down, minimize this. Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, this is what we'll be covering tonight. Uh, the first thing is uh, we want to understand uh, why trading psychology is the key differentiating factor in success or failure in trading. So this is uh, so important. You see the the what they call that the diagram uh, next uh, to the uh, uh, words here. So it's uh, trading psychology is a is a multi-dimensional. Uh, what they call that uh, concept, okay? It, it delves into very, very deep things about the mental uh, framework, about psychology and all that, right? Uh, but there are very, uh, some key factors that you need to, to really understand because if you understand those uh, factors, uh, a lot of it will actually fall uh, into place. The jigsaws will fall into place, right? So in trading psychology, it's so wide and, 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 and so, um, in depth, it can go very deep. You, know? you can go into uh, understanding beliefs, understanding uh, a person's, even his upbringing and its impact uh, impact in his trading, his, uh, what do you call that, how to go in and change beliefs, how to erase beliefs. Those are the things that uh, that is part of trading psychology, but I won't be covering that tonight, of course, because we don't have time for that, right? So we want to understand what are the key differentiating factors. Number two is, we want to recognize what are the trader mindsets that lead to profitable trading, okay? We want to understand uh, where errors come in, okay? And identify those errors so that we don't make those errors, you know? If you are aware of those uh, errors, at least you know that uh, if those pops up in your trading or in today-to-day -to -day, uh, uh, trading, you'll be able to recognize it and to solve it. You will say, oh, okay, this is, a, this is an error. I shouldn't be doing it. Or I'll try to correct myself the next time. Right, and also what are the success uh, uh, mindsets? Okay, to recognize the mindsets uh, of success in trading. So you ask yourself whether you are you are you are uh, implementing those mindsets or not, or do you have that kind of mindsets when you are actually in the trade? So those are the things that uh, you will learn in the second uh, bullet point. And then lastly, of course, we'll look uh, about some certain methods of how to manage emotions and mind states in trading. Actually, in, in managing emotions and mind states, if you understand the concept of how you approach trading, then a lot of these emotions and mind states will actually fall into place, right? So um, these are the three key points that we'll be covering in this session tonight. Okay, so um, this is a, a familiar slide. You've, saw, you've seen this slide uh, in the last couple of sessions. We talk about the, uh, the every single part of that makes up a good trading strategy. And we also said that all, out of all these three parts, the first part of which is methodology, we spent actually two sessions on methodology. Okay, important, yes. And then uh, the last session we had money management. Now the la the the third uh, sorry the, the third factor in trading strategy and the most important one as you can see in this uh, what you call the size of this uh, subset of the trading strategy is psychology and this is the most important of all the three ingredients in a trading strategy. Without good mindsets, without good trading psychologies, you will not be able to implement your money management that you have or the methodology that you have. Okay, so this is the key. Uh, today's or uh, tonight's uh, uh, session is very, very crucial. 
Okay, so let's, uh, before we go into the nitty gritty of uh, trading psychology, let's talk about the market as a whole. What is a market? Over here, you see a, a picture of, uh, this is of course uh, no longer exists. This is a, a, a picture of the uh, trading floor on the Chicago uh, uh, Mercantile. It's probably CBOT or uh, CME. Uh, you can see all the traders over here. Uh, so previously when they were traded, they were, they were trading face-to-face uh, -face and can see all sorts of emotions of the people there. You can see here this guy uh, with his hands, uh, uh, Let's see whether I can draw something over here. Okay, uh, so this guy, right? Um, oops, sorry. Mm. Let's see if we can get this pen here to work. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't work now. You can see this guy, if you can see my cursor. This guy is like a very happy man. He's victorious. He must have got uh, his orders done and making a good profit. This guy stares at him, maybe not doing as well as, as he is doing. This guy looks very dejected, looking at his order sheets and uh, probably asking himself what has happened to his positions. So there's a whole uh, boiling pot uh, of of uh, of uh, what do you call that uh, different different emotions on this pit. You know, even in this one picture, you can see so many different emotions. Okay, but all this all these people over here doing the trades. All this make a market. So what is a market? A market is basically a crowd of people uh, uh, placing bets. Uh, well, the, the word placing bets may not go down very well with everybody, but basically everybody is expressing the opinion of the market. Okay, so a crowd that is exp uh, ex uh, what you call that expressing the opinion of the market, whether the market is up or the market is down, all of them, when you aggregate all these people, all these trader, it becomes a market. Okay, so that's uh, one very interesting study. Okay, and done uh, uh, a long time ago. And when in this guy uh, in the next slide, yeah. Okay, this guy, a uh, French guy, Gustave Le Bon. Uh, he was studying the psychology of the crowd. Okay, studying the crowd this is one of the early studies. And basically, when he says, when he's looking at crowds, when an individual joins a crowd, okay, individuals like us, individuals like traders, when they go into a market and join a crowd, okay, a lot of things go through. He, he goes through what you call a transformation, okay. So, a lot of things can happen and a lot of people, when they join a crowd or join a market or, or join a trade, okay, whether it's the stock market or the commodity market or futures market, they, a lot of them lose themselves, you know, cease to operate as an individual. Okay, he loses himself and becomes something a bit like a robot. You know, he doesn't think anymore. He doesn't think. He doesn't think independently anymore. Okay, that's why this word called cease to be guided on his own or guided by his will. Okay, and accepts ideas super, uh, superficially. Okay, so not only in markets, but it happens in every every single uh, event. Uh, it can be a rally, it can be a political rally, it can be a, a, a group of crowd of people uh, uh, championing their rights and all that, you know. So there's always this leader, and you can see Caesar here in this uh, movie. And uh, they they have this leader, they chant slogans and all that, and they lose themselves, okay. And the thing about uh, people losing themselves in the market, okay, uh, and forming that crowd, okay, it uh, something actually happens quite often okay and what do crowds normally do okay crowds normally will do this okay what do crowds do typically in the market okay they normally do this buying market tops i don't know whether you do that i've done that before okay always buy at the highest price on the market okay remember all those people that bought the uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, Bitcoin right at the top. Of course, today is back up at the top again, okay? But in 2017, all right, your auntie, uncle, everybody was asking you about uh, Bitcoin, okay? And everybody like rushing in to buy at the top, okay? The other thing that crowds typically do best as well is to sell the market bottoms as well. And I have done that before as well, okay? During my early days uh, learning how to trade, uh, in the in 1993, okay, I also sold uh, market bottoms. I also bought market tops. So, so typically crowds do that, okay. And in terms of looking at trading psychology, it's how 
you can control yourself. It's how you can differentiate the crowd to in order to make a profit or to consistently make a profit in the markets. Okay, so if you continue to follow the crowds, uh, is essentially you'll fall into these two categories: buying the market tops and selling the market bottoms. Right, this is because crowds typically do this the best. So we want to avoid that. So by learning. Uh, trading psychology and understanding trading psychology, hopefully you will not be in this crowd of people doing these two things. Okay, so trading psychology, a very big word. Okay, what is trading psychology? In a very, very, uh, uh, what do you call that, a concise description, trading psychology is basically the psychology of taking risks. Okay, trading psychology is the psychology of taking risks, right? And when we make decisions in times of uncertainty, right? So every time we, we go into a market, okay, we make a decision, whether we made this decision through, say, um, technical analysis or fundament, uh, fundamental analysis, or some people go in by their feelings or going by their guts, they see the market's going up, they just follow the momentum. All the time we are basically making decisions in uncertainty because you don't know okay all trades that you do are risky because the outcomes are only probable and not guaranteed right if every single trade is guaranteed you you know what to do right you pour everything into it but you know instinctively and intuitively that all trades are risky and this is risky because the outcomes you never know what actually is the outcome and it is not guaranteed right so traders we are all traders, okay? Whether it's the stock market or the futures market, all of us are risk takers, okay? Who accept the risk inherent in every trade, okay? So you accept the risk and then you make that trade. Now this, this particular uh, bullet point, traders accept risk take, traders are risk takers who accept, okay? This accept, I put it in capital because uh, some people say they are able to take the risk. Okay, take the risk and accept the risk are two very different different things. Okay, uh, a lot of people can take risks. Okay, but they may not be able to accept risk. Okay, that's why people can go into the trades. They can lose a lot of money. Okay, but they cannot accept taking a stop loss. You see the difference there. They take a huge loss. They can take huge financial risk. Okay, but they cannot accept taking a stop loss. Okay, so the ability to take and accept risk, okay, that accept that risk is inherent is in every trade is actually a very deep concept, okay, which we will go into uh, later uh, deeper, okay. So the next point is all good traders can accept the risk of possible loss uh, without emotional discomfort. This is the highest achievement if you're good in your trading psychology. You can accept the risk, you can accept a loss with no emotional discomfort. I've put that in bold and also in capital. This is a key concept, right? So the ability to accept risk okay, without emotional discomfort is the key and the most important skill to learn in trading psychology, okay? Already, so in, in this particular slides, okay, of course you have this gentleman here, 306 versus 232. So um, I don't know whether he's taking that loss uh, without emotional discomfort, not, um, but uh, you know, he seems to have a lot of outbursts uh, with the results of what has happened uh, 24 uh, a month ago. So, um, but traders need to understand this. You must be able to accept a loss without emotional discomfort or work towards that. It's not going to be instant, okay? Uh, you need to work towards uh, that goal. And that is the most important skill in trading psychology, right? So let's move on. Okay, this is a very interesting slide, okay? Um, um, these are news that have hit the lines. Uh, I, one of those uh, articles that I've uh, plucked out on the left is uh, from Bloomberg. Bloomberg uh, talks about this uh, particular hiring by Bridgewater Associates. Uh, Bridgewater Associates is one of the world's biggest hedge fund, and they hired uh, the world's best female poker player, right, to become uh, one of their... Uh, 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 what they call that uh, staff, okay? And then on the right, uh, we have this uh, article from the Times talking about this guy also, a, a hedge fund, uh, what they call that, um, hiring uh, poker players, okay? 
uh, because they believe that poker players make very good hedge funds. Okay, and this is a very interesting story, and I want to tell you a relate to you a story uh, that ha uh, happened to me many many years early in my uh, my my trading and early in my career um, in the early 90s. I was uh, uh, attending this um, uh, what do you call that seminar in um, where was it? Okay, it was at the Bankers Club in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, and uh, the guy that was giving the seminar was a um, uh, the currency trader, uh, supposedly from J.P. Morgan, okay, and uh, he's supposedly one of the very, very good uh, uh, currency traders. And he was, uh, of course, uh, at the time he was uh, talking about his uh, experience, and of course he wanted to actually get us to sign up for a, a course. That was like the uh, introductory to the course, and then later sign up for a course. By the time we was, I was still very young and couldn't afford this very expensive course, right? But he was telling us about his experience, how he traded, the biggest lessons he learned, okay? And um, we being young and we wanted to like squeeze, uh, we couldn't afford uh, his big seminar, so he wanted to squeeze, a couple of my friends were there with me as well. We wanted to squeeze some ideas out of him, right? And he finally relented and 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 told uh, Grovers and said that if you really want to learn, uh, we were asking him what books, you know, can you recommend to us so that we can go and learn and all that, right? So he was saying that the best books, the best books on trading can be found where, you know? It can be found in the Las Vegas bookshop, okay? So that was what he told us, okay? And uh, I took his uh, advice uh, to heart. So, um, well, uh, uh, there's no Las Vegas in Malaysia. Of course, there's Gunting up there. Uh, but I never noticed there was a bookshop in Gunting. But anyway, um, I went to all the bookshops around in KL and, and bought up all the books uh, on, on casino, on poker, on bakara, on 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 uh, speculating and uh, on gambling and all that, right? So I wanted to find out what is this guy talking about? The, the greatest lessons in trading can be learned from these books. And I do realize after reading through so many, so many of those books, okay? And these books are still with me until today. I keep it as a sentimental value because there are so many lessons I've learned there. Of course, one of those, uh, and then there are many books on poker as well. As and you can see from the evidence nowadays uh, that what this trader said was actually true that hedge funds even you know, hire the world's best poker players to become their trade their traders right so what are the lessons i learned from those books that i read number one is i learned about trading psychology right and number two i learned about money management right so those were the two greatest lessons i learned to all these books i read okay and all these people, these best female poker players, all these poker players, uh, world rankings, and there are a lot of firms that hire hedge funds and all that, they hire all these people. What they want is because all these uh, poker players and all these people who have been there uh, uh, speculating on cards on a daily basis, and these are world champions, they are already trained in the key lessons of money management and trading psychology. Right. So those are, uh, are why you know, all these biggest hedge funds in the world hire these people. And there are big, big lessons that we can learn from that. Okay. So the next slide will take you to some of the lessons and what are the similarities between trading and poker. Okay. So these are the, the uh, similarities, right? You can see over here. Uh, number, thing, number one is, of course, we spoke about that, the decision making in incomplete uh, information with incomplete information. You don't know what is the next card right, which we're going to be dealt to you, right? So you're making decisions in, in uncertainty, right? So in the markets are similar as well. You don't know how the trade is going to, or how the market is going to move. You don't know for sure, okay, what's going to happen, okay? Of course, markets can either move up or move down, but you don't know uh, exactly, okay, at that particular moment, what the market's going to do. So both trading and, and the game of poker are inherently risky because there's no guaranteed outcome, right? In trading, there's no guaranteed outcome from trade to trade, okay? And number three, money management. As I said just now, money management in terms of trading and bankroll management in terms of poker. Okay, poker basically, when you talk about uh, bankroll, that means what funds they have in their bankroll, the management 
uh, which is very similar to that of money management. It's basically managing your capital and what risk do you take on every single trade or every single play that the poker player plays? How much of his, uh, what do you call that, uh, bankroll does he risk? Okay, so extremely, extremely, uh, uh, what do you call that, similar to money management in trading. Okay, and both of them are very crucial to manage risk. Okay, those of you who have joined us in the last session, we talked about this money management, and it's very, very similar as well. Right, and without this right money management, even the best strategy can fail. Okay, whether you're a good player or you're a good trader, in terms of your methodology, you have a very good method or, or a very good way to play uh, poker, but you don't know how to manage your capital, you will also, in the end, uh, go broke. Okay, so the fourth point is of course the, the psycho psychological patterns of winning and losing in poker and trading is very, very similar. Okay, so you are making basically a lot of these poker players who are not very good, they are making a lot of emotional decisions. Just as we as traders sometimes become very, very emotional by making the decisions or the market drives us to be very, very emotional. So we need to make a lot of rational decisions rather than emotional decisions. Right. Yeah. So there's those uh, similarities in trading and poker. OK. And of course, both trading and poker require some conscientious practice and learning. This one point that I will talk a bit later. Right. Uh, you need to have uh, some sort of a, 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 a practice and you need to spend time to learn about trading as well. Right. Um, of course, trading and poker are extremely competitive. It's uh, all driven by money, and, and and the fact of money is money. Money always uh, uh, brings out a lot of emotionals, uh, a lot of emotions in people, and we will see some of these emotions later. Right. So both of them can resemble gambling if done without education. Okay, or in an unhealthy way. Okay, so in terms of uh, trading in futures or even in the stock market, if you don't know what you're doing, okay, you could actually be gambling. Okay, if you go in without education, education is very important. You need to learn about trading. You need to learn about money management. You need to learn about trading psychology. Trading psychology. Don't go into the market blindly, right? So you need to have this education and all this. Uh, what they call that um, initiatives by uh, the exchange, uh, by, by the Securities Commission, and even by the brokers is to help you educate, to give, give you the uh, information and the education you need to do well in the market. Okay, so education is very, very important. So we move down to talk about the emotions. Okay, so uh, we saw the, just now in the slides uh, the ability to trade uh, or take a risk without emotions coming into play is very, 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 very important. Okay, so let's talk about emotions in trading. Okay, every time you enter a trade, okay, a lot of people lose the logic. Okay, as you can see, uh, before you enter trade, you are in a very good mood. Okay, you talk to your wife nicely, and once you press that button to buy or sell, you can actually transform into a totally different person. Okay, so once you enter a trade, logic can go out the go out the window and you can become an emotional animal. Okay, why? Because these two emotions come in: the emotions of fear and greed take over. Okay, if you don't have a good hold of your emotions or your training psychology, these two uh, uh, horn guys, fear and greed, will come and take over. Okay, why? Why? Because this two uh, fear of losing money and greed for making more money, these two of the biggest emotions in trading comes into play. Okay, and we'll let's talk a bit more about these two things. Okay, fear, greed, and also the other one, ego, are the downfall of traders. These are very basic human uh, emotions and these are part of a very powerful human nature, right? We all have fear, we all have greed, okay? Um, we all have this ego, right? Uh, people don't want to lose money, right? You go into the market, you know, it, of course, people don't like to, to, to lose money. I also hate to lose money, right? So this fear of losing money, this greed of want to, wanting to make more and more money, okay, it sometimes colors their thoughts, uh, colors their ability to make good decisions, okay. And uh, the other thing is ego, okay. Uh, this is uh, less uh, spoken about, but this is also a very, very important point, 
okay because ego makes it makes you very difficult to admit mistakes okay so if you are very invested in your ego you tell everybody uh, that you made this once in a lifetime trade you're gonna make it big and you tell the whole world that you're doing this you cannot come off from that particular platform that you said those words right so ego is also a very very powerful emotion that goes through and we will cover a bit of this as we go in the next few slides so let's first talk about fear because fear is the fundamental problem and the key source of trading errors okay fear can come up in various various forms okay one is the fear of losing money which is the most predominant fear everybody fears that you now they go into this is uh, either trading or investment they always fear of this losing money right now the other two this the other the second one is called the fear of missing out okay so um, a lot of this um, the markets uh, this year uh, um, because of the COVID-19 situation when markets actually went down so uh, so fast uh, uh, you know uh, the market collapsed uh, in in March and all that and then suddenly came back up and there was this huge uh, 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 what you call it, fear of missing out. A lot of people just going and piling into the market because of this fear of missing out. Okay, so a lot of people as well, uh, not only in the US markets, but even in our Malaysian stock markets and all that, you can see this emotion of the fear of missing out. Okay, uh, and then what happens when you have this fear of missing out? Okay, you do what crowds normally do best. Okay. That means buying the tops and you have seen that a lot in in the markets uh, lately as well in the last couple of months people just pouring in people borrowing money to pour into the market okay whether they know what they're doing or not it's uh, another question but it's the fear of missing out they're saying that hey my friends made so much money you know trading this particular stock or, or trading this particular futures so they go in blindly right because the fear of missing out Right, so that is also another of those fears. The other one, of course, uh, fear of being wrong. This has part to do with ego as well, right? Uh, um, this is also one of those fears. Uh, the fourth is the fear of leaving money on the table. Okay, uh, this is a, a, a fear where you're already making uh, some money in the market or in that particular trade, you're profitable. You have fear of losing that profit. Uh, this is currently running okay and this particular fear actually makes you take your take your profits too soon right so all these four four types of fear actually are the key source of trading errors okay so uh, what are the the impact you will have the impact one of those impacts is uh, one of the very important one is not be able to cut losses or don't want to cut losses okay uh, because although they are losing money in their positions they fear losing money they don't cut losses okay and they hold on to positions so a lot of traders hold on to positions because of these fears they wait and see okay so uh, in hokkien uh, wait and see uh, see is die you know so the more you wait the more you die all right so this this overwhelming uh, emotion of fear is one of the key contributors of trading errors so we move on to look at why fear is such a powerful emotion okay there was this study done uh, in 1991 by this uh, three uh, researchers Kenman, Nash and Teller I hope I pronounced them their, their, their names properly okay uh, basically uh, the fear comes from this endowment effect okay so uh, when they did this study they showed they were able to show that the the, the emotion of fear of losses okay this loss aversion that means people feel more pain you know uh, uh, from a loss compared to the pleasure of the gain and they were able to measure somehow that the losses the the, the pain of taking a loss is two and a half times more powerful okay than the the emotion of gains okay so that's very interesting okay so people place a higher value on objects they own relative to the objects they not which is the endowment effect and part of that uh, endowment effect uh, 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 is where uh, loss aversion comes in right so it's very painful uh, normally very painful two and a half times more 
painful and more powerful these particular emotions of pain, a loss of taking a loss. That's why people find it so difficult to take a loss. And cutting a losses is not just a a what they call that a rational choice, but it's an emotional choice. People can't do it because of this particular fear, right? So this is an interesting uh, uh, study done by these three gentlemen. Okay, so if you are, uh, if you don't understand trading or don't understand uh, drawdowns, this particular slide, uh, we've done it uh, previously before. Handling drawdowns, what are drawdowns? Basically, in terms of looking at your trading equity, your profits and, uh, and losses, your graph of your profit and losses grows up and down. Okay, so there are times when there is a drawdown, that means your equity goes down. Okay, those losing streaks and those losing streaks are unavoidable. Okay, it's part of trading. You know, you can't uh, win all the time and you cannot have an equity uh, curve that is straight line. Okay, it, it, it goes up and if your trading methodology and your risk management and money management is solid, you'll find that your, your what do you call that, the equity curve will be uh, moving upwards on the upward slope. But there will still be a time where uh, the the there are down slopes which is called the uh, drawdowns okay and that's where uh, the differentiating factor between the good traders and the ex traders those who who exit the market because they lost money or couldn't trade anymore that is the key differentiating thing okay and of course risk management strategy is one of the key in handling but also trading psychology is to understand okay to be able to be able to take the emotional pain that losing streak that comes with the emotional content as well, okay? And we spoke uh, previously on this particular slide, uh, the last time I talked about this, is one of the key things in handling drawdowns is to need to have enough capital when you're trading, right? So um, if you don't have enough capital, okay, and especially if you have capital that uh, you can't lose or you fear losing, okay, or that money you borrowed from somewhere, right, and you cannot lose that money, Okay, scared money. This is called in our trading terms, it's called scared money. Scared money will always lose. Okay, because of the underlying trading psychology, uh, what they call that uh uh, uh behind uh, the fear of losing money. Okay, so scared money, uh, not enough money. Or money you cannot afford to lose if you are uh, you know, you're spec speculating, you're going to the markets with that kind of of uh, training psychology, that is impossible to help. Okay, because already inherently the fear is there. Okay, I hope you understand. That's why it's very important to have enough capitalization. You need to have buffer because that particular buffer in funds will be able to let you ride through these losing streaks and come back. Okay, if you can't ride through these losing streaks or what we call drawdowns, you won't be able to sustain your trading. Okay, so this is very, very important in terms of talking about handling drawdowns. Not only is it a technique, a mechanical technique of risk management, but also the psychological, uh, what you call that meaning behind scared money. Okay, so I hope that that, uh, that uh, explains why uh, drawdowns are difficult for those who, who are uh, not uh, or don't have their mind game uh, down well. So greed, okay, we've talked about fear. Let's talk about greed, okay? Greed, what happens when it comes to greed? Of course, greed, you're basically focusing on your profit and loss, okay? How many times have you like you know, make a few good trades then you you extrapolated that graph, okay? Let's say, for example, you made these nice three trades this week and you made, uh, say, a 1,000 or 2,000 ringgit and then you start to extrapolate, okay? And like this guy on the right, he's thinking about his money, how he's multiplying his money and all that, okay? So what greed uh, does is it takes you out of focusing on the process. The process of trading, of, of managing your methodology and your risk, uh, risk and money management is very, very important, okay? Uh, if you only focus on the money, okay, the greed factor, okay, you forget about the process. And sometimes if you lose money, then uh, these particular emotions will 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 uh, what do you call that uh, will make you do what we call the revenge trades. Okay, uh, the Hokkien say post you 
you know, you trade post you. So when you, you are, you're doing revenge trades, you're not following your process. You will tend to over trade. You will tend to, you know, because you want to win back the money that you just lost, okay? You will take extra risk. So greed and focusing on the money is one of those key places where uh, uh, trading psychology errors can happen as well. Okay, so take note of that, okay? Yeah. Ego, the third one, okay, the third most powerful guy, okay? What is ego? Ego gives you this particular uh, problem. Ego is the need to be right, okay? You need to be right. And the need to be right is, 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 is not good, definitely, for your trading, okay? So there's always this, uh, you can see on the right here, this question, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich, okay? I think this was, was one quote from one of the famous traders, okay? So high, Q, high IQ and intelligent can be an obstacle in trading success. A lot of people who come into trading are very intelligent people, right? Okay, so sometimes uh, the higher IQ and the more intelligent you think you are, okay, uh, it can be an obstacle to your trading success, okay? Because you you think you are so studied into the, uh, into this market, or you have researched all your trades and all that, or you've done so much technical analysis on on this that you cannot be wrong, okay? So this is one key problem: you cannot be wrong, or you cannot afford to be wrong, or your ego cannot afford to be wrong okay so the, this is a very very debil debilitating uh, emotion to feel okay because you cannot be wrong so when you can't be wrong you cannot take a loss okay and the key things about trading is you must be able to accept and take a loss okay the other thing also paralysis by analysis you know you have so many different so a lot of people when they lose money what is the first thing they they think they need to do Okay, a lot of people think that if they lose money, they need to know more about the market. Okay, they need to analyze more. They need to have more uh, technical indicators. Okay, now I'm using two technical indicators. I should use five in technical indicators, thinking that by putting more indicators, uh, they'll be able to improve your trading. Okay, but actually by introducing more and more things into your analysis, you will fall into this ego trap. Okay, you will have paralysis by analysis. Okay, you can't react. Okay, so in terms of trading the market, you must be able to re react. Okay, if, if this situation presents itself, what are you going to do? Okay, like a poker player, it's not going to like re analyze all his different hands. Of course, he has got that analysis already in the head and he knows, he knows how to react when certain cards come up and shows its face, right? He knows what to do, right? He needs to react to every situation uh, uh, that comes out, every card that's shown to him or for a trader, every single situation or, or trade comes out, what he needs to do, he needs to re react, whether to take profit, to add on his trades or to cut losses, right? So if you are stuck or you've paralyzed by analysis, so say, wait, okay, I need to consult this particular indicator. After this indicator, and I have another five indicators to, to, to consult. By that time, your position will have don't know, gone where already. Right? So it's very important to realize that ego can be a very, very uh, debilitating, uh, what you call that, uh, emotion to have as well. Okay, And of course, this holding too strong an opinion or view is also very dangerous. Okay, So you need to be very light on your feet. Okay, You shouldn't hold too strong opinion. Okay, now uh, the other thing is also theory versus reality. Okay, so are you very objective in your trading? Okay, when you're very objective in your trading, that means you accept the reality of the market. Okay, the reality is the market can go anywhere and you may not have any control over where it's going to go. Right, so if you theoretically feel that oh, you should be right, I've studied all this, and these are all factors that have come in, I need to be right or I have to be right, then you're in trouble. Okay, so we've gone through these three very, very important, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, emotions that always uh, cause trading errors. And I want to talk to you about this top 20 reasons why 90% of the traders lose money. Okay, a lot of it you can see from as we run through it, okay, you can see it's all psychologically uh, 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 related. Okay, so these are the top 20 reasons why traders lose money. Okay, number one is this, not knowing the difference between long-term investing and trading, okay? And this happens a lot uh, in, in, in the stock market as well. A lot of uh, traders go in and say, hey, you know, I'm going to, uh, this stock has momentum, I'm going to trade it for the next two or three days, 
right? And after these two or three days, the stock didn't really do anything. In fact, it went down. So what happens? He said, oh, okay, let, let me hold this for a week. It become an intraday week trade. And then the stocks continue to go down and it become, he holds it for months and then months become years, okay? So um, I've done it before, okay? Those are the things that I've learned as well. I've seen a lot of people do it as well, uh, not only in stocks, but in in uh, futures trading as well and it's it's uh, because futures trading is leverage that's even worse right so you need to understand the difference between long-term investing and trading okay trading is for very short term and of course trading if you're good at it the the returns are very handsome as well long-term investing about is about very steady gains over time it's a whole it's a buy and hold strategy so it's very different so if you're trading you trade if you're investing you invest so you need to differentiate that okay number two is un underestimating the risk and leverage okay so we spoke of that uh, in risk and money management we spoke of that even in the methodology you must be able to understand the risk and understand the power of leverage okay so leverage can work for you and leverage can also work against you okay and the other, third one is very 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 uh, this is very deceptive, okay? Um, especially for those who come into the market and in the first few trades make money, okay? And they are deceived by the thought that trading is so simple. They say, wow, this is like sub, sub, so, you know, so easy to make money. I'm fantastic, you know, I'm a fantastic trader. So he thinks that trading, okay, by winning the first few trades, he's a good trader, okay? So this is a deception because the, the deception is that trading can look so simple, okay? Uh, trading can look simple, okay? But it's not necessarily easy, okay? So the key to, to trading is actually consistently making profits, okay? So this is a trap that uh, a lot of beginners get caught into it, okay? They think it's so easy, okay? The, after the first few trades, then they, the greed comes in, remember? The greed, greed comes in and it starts to extrapolate, okay? And then uh, if, uh, he will start to put in a lot more capital and take a lot more risk. Okay, so uh, this is a deception that you need to recognize. Okay, trading needs study, needs education, and needs experience. Okay, so that comes to the fourth point, which is no training before trading. Okay, realize this every time you enter into a market, every time you enter a trade, you are trading possibly okay with the saviors and expert traders you have robots trading on against you on the other side okay so uh, if you have no training okay and if you're not prepared before trading you are trading actually at a big disadvantage okay so this is a very important point okay and because it comes from number three the deception that trading looks very simple so he feels that oh uh, there's no tr training no i can take the risk take the risk and not accept the risk can take the risk no trading. So please bear this in mind. You need to have experience. You need to have a good system, okay, uh, before you go all out on, on your trading, okay? Number five is starting off undercapitalized. We spoke about that, the, the scared money, right? Scared money always lose. Remember that scared money always lose. So if you have scared money on the table for trading, my best advice is uh, uh, take that 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 capital out from your 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 trading until you have enough capital then only put it at risk okay this is very very important okay which leads us to number six which is using money that isn't truly risk capital trading it's always every time you sign that risk disclosure uh, document when you you open an account to trade either stocks or futures you have this risk disclosure that you must understand that you must use and trade with risk capital. Very, very important. Huh? Trade with risk capital, okay? Not money you cannot afford to lose, okay? Definitely not uh, you know, your baby's milk money, okay? Definitely not with your, 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 your what do you call that? Your, your children's education fund, okay? This is very important, okay? Seven, overconfidence, okay? Which is very related to number three, okay? This is a beginner's mistake. Okay, winning a few trades and thinking that uh, this is like no problem. I'm already a good trader. Okay, and it's just only done five trades. Okay, number eight is one thing to be right. This is an ego problem. Okay, one thing to be right instead of making money. You recognize that that's an ego problem. There's a trading psychology error. Number nine, listening to other people's opinion, OPO. 
Okay, so you base your trading on news, you base your trading on rumors, you base your trading on social media feeds, Instagram, Facebook, and all that. Okay, that means you're not making a measured and research, uh, well researched uh, idea. Okay, not tar not overly research. I'm saying that you need to have a decision made on rational. Maybe it's a methodology that you use technical analysis. Okay, or or you 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 have a good fundamental analysis for long term trades. This is very important. Listening to OPO or other people's opinion won't cut it. Okay, because other people have different different uh, what they call that um, uh, agendas. Okay, rumors, people who, who spin rumors or, or spin news on the social media, they have different agendas. Okay, and most of the time that agenda is not to make you rich, right? Now, number 10, trading for excitement. Okay, this is uh, another thing. This is probably a greed factor. Okay, so this has no basis on good trading, which is trading on excitement. Excitement is an emotion. Okay. The next number 11 lack of money management okay so this we spoke about already lack of methodology these are the two key ingredients we need to have okay plus trading psychology having trading rules you can't or won't follow this could be a trading uh, psychology error as well after making a few losses in a row uh, you can't pull the trigger okay you don't want to follow the trading rules uh, 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 anymore because you forgot that you know there's drawdown every time you trade there's a drawdown Okay, so you forgot that, okay? So you don't want to follow the rules anymore. So you, again, uh, you default to either listening to rumors, okay, or following uh, your instincts, okay? Number 14, having unrealistic expectations of trading returns, okay? This is a very important point. Well, this is another trading psychology error, which is greed, okay? So um, if you go into the futures market and you have uh, highly unrealistic expectations, okay, or you took some risk, uh, money that you couldn't risk, uh, afford to risk, and you want to make some uh, um, huge uh, trading returns for some reason or another, you needed the, uh, the money fast, normally you will lose because this is one of those reasons why uh, people lose money. Okay. Over trading, we spoke about that, uh, both in size and frequency. It could be greed, it could be revenge trading, it could be ego. Okay. Lack of discipline. Okay. This is another. Uh, not wanting to follow follow the training rules that you have, lack of patience. Okay, this could be greed as well. Okay, uh, number eighteen, seeing trading as a hobby and not a business. Okay, uh, so you're just mucking around, you're just playing. Okay, so if you are playing in your trading, uh, a lot of uh, professional traders and uh, are very happy to take your money. Okay, so if you are willing to uh, let go of money, a lot of people are all too happy to take it. So. Um, don't see trading as a hobby. Take it more seriously. Okay, look at it as a business. Okay, and and then you will trade better. Okay, which brings us to number nineteen, which is trading without a plan. Okay, you trade as a hobby. Normally, there's no plan. Okay, you go in there and you just make a few puns, hoping to make some money, and you miss a few of these puns. Uh, you cannot take uh, except a risk. Then you don't take a cut loss, and all that will turn into a disastrous outing. All right and the last one is trading hunches okay that means you 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 don't have a methodology you trade by i feel okay you may look at some charts okay but you don't really actually have a methodology you're just fooling yourself you're looking at some charts then you say no i feel so every time you see yourself or you catch yourself making a trade you ask yourself a question you know you if you say i feel that the market is going up or i feel when you say i feel I feel it's from an emotional uh, origin, right? So you need to be able to ask yourself the basis of your trade. Is it a, 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 a rule that you have and it has triggered that particular setup, uh, say a trading setup, it could be an ABC setup or a momentum indicator setup, which we spoke about in the last two sessions. Those are the triggers and, and there's no feeling in the, there's no, I feel into it. The signal is there and you execute that signal. Or if you certain uh, 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 a fundamental analysis, uh, key in uh, what they call that uh, measures that you have already in, then you do it, you know, you don't use the I feel because I feel comes from an emotional origin, okay, hunches, right? So those are the the, tom, uh, the 20 top, uh, uh, reasons why traders lose money and 90% of that's a very sad uh, what you call that uh, what it, um, percentage actually but 90% of people lose money because of these 20 reasons okay so uh, by be able to recognize 
uh, these pitfalls or these these uh, areas of errors, you will you you will be able to uh, more or less recognize that if you are in any one of these categories, you need to uh, uh, improve or you need to get yourself out of this, right? So now we move on. Okay, we move on to an interesting part. Okay, hopefully we have time for this. Okay, now we are going to talk about the models of successful traders. Okay, and when it comes to uh, models of successful traders, it has got to do with things called beliefs. Okay, because what you believe will uh, will affect your actions. Okay, how you act is 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 a or has its origins in your beliefs. Okay, so let's talk about trading beliefs. Um, I think we have some time, and we'll take some time. Um, uh, Shane will flash some uh, what do you call that uh, polls, okay, uh, and asking this question, okay. Uh, he'll put up one trading belief, okay, and uh, you answer yes or no. We want to sort of like poll your response uh, to it. The first one is, the market is a safe place to invest and trade. Let's put a poll on that, okay. We're gonna open right. the poll. You just respond by clicking. Yeah, Shane will yeah, help me with this. Yeah, the poll is up. Yeah, so just respond to this. Respond to this yes trading no. belief. The market. Yes, the market is a safe place to invest or trade. Yes or no? Okay, your gut feel. Okay. Just key in just... yes or no. Yeah, let's do it for another. You know. Mm. So what do we seconds. have for this? Okay. So quickly. Okay. Okay, we have yes, sixty got... over percent voter. Yes. 60% yes or no? We haven't got the yes or no okay. yet. Yeah. All right, okay. so let me just close the poll. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> let me share you the result. David, can you see the result? Okay, I need to click on it, right? Okay, let me click on it. Okay. Um, can you see the result? I, I've got it on the screen. Oh, I can't see it somehow. <laughs> yeah, I think wait, oh, I need 50, to. 50. Uh... Oh, 50 50. Okay. 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 Okay, so yeah, let's move on to it. Yes, 50%. No, okay, uh, let's go into the next one. <laughs> okay, let me just launch the next poll. Yeah. All right. The market is a dangerous place to invest or trade. Uh, yes or no, yes or no. Okay, so I give you all 30 seconds. Answer this. Okay, so respond to this. The market is a dangerous place to invest. Or trade is very similar to the first one, but some people have a different uh, response to this, although it's just the opposite of the first one. Mm. Okay, what <laughs> okay. do we have? Uh, we have 70% uh, of people voted. So 43% uh, say yes, it's okay. dangerous. 57% mm. say no, it is not All dangerous. right, you have a group of uh, okay. people who can take risks here. <laughs> okay, let's okay. go to the next one. Okay, the so next one is, is you can you can easily make money in the market. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Who believes that? Who believes that you can easily make money in the market? Uh, if you believe that, click yes. If you don't believe, click no. Okay, let me just open for another 10 seconds. Yes, All right. You can easily make money in the market. So, yes or no? You, so what do we have? So the result here is thirty-seven percent feel that yes, you can easily make money. Sixty-three percent feel that no, it's not easy to make money in the market. Mm, very interesting. More okay. Even no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next, we'll go to big players control the markets, and it's hard for the little guy. Okay. This I hear a lot from the people. You know. Uh, okay. okay, so we put up the poll, and as you respond, I'll explain on a bit on this. Okay, this this okay. thought about big players control the markets is hard for a little guy. Every time I put a stop loss, this big player know my stop loss. They always trigger my stop loss. I hear this all the time, you know. Uh, they yeah. seem to know where my stop loss is. Every time it goes up there, takes out my stop loss, and then uh, goes back to where I was originally correct. Right. So yeah. So that has some origin on this as well. So what do we have there, Shane? Okay, all right. Uh, let me just wait five more seconds. Okay, we have 70% voted. The result is 
63%, that means two-thirds of mm. you feel that yes, big players control the market, but by 33%, you know, feel that no. Mm. So it's quite prevalent huh, that the, the thought of big players actually control the market and it's hard for the little guy. We go to the next one. Okay. Okay. It's, it's tough uh, very similar. To make mm. Money in the market, yes or no? Yeah. Who feels it's tough to make money in the markets? If you feel tough, then check yes. If you feel not tough, check no. Mm. Okay, let me just open for another five more seconds. All right. We have 59% uh, feel that yes, it is tough to make money. 41% mm. feel that no. Okay, mm. it is not so tough to make money in the market. Okay, that hey, means this is an encouraging uh, result as well. So you, we, we do have a crowd there. Uh, that uh, is uh, profitable, which is good as well. So let's go to the last one. So the question, the, the statement is, yeah, last poll. The statement is, you need to have lots of information before you can trade profitably. Who believes that, yes or no? Right. Okay. Give These you are some of the common. 15, yeah. Fifteen more seconds to answer. <laughs> All right, so okay, let me just close the poll and share the result. So 65% of you feel that yes, you need to have a lot of information before you can trade profitably, and 35% mm. of you feel that no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you more very people much. Feel that very you need good. more information. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, and thank you, Shane, for helping me uh, on this poll. So we have a very interesting uh, responses, okay, uh, to uh, this a uh, few of the common trading beliefs in the markets, okay? So these are how people actually feel and you've already pulled uh, the results as well. You can see quite a different range of ex responses, okay? And all these responses and how you believe this, uh, uh, all this market, uh, what you call that uh, so-called trading beliefs will have an impact on how you act. Okay, and each of this is, uh, let's say for example, the first and second one. The market is a safe place to trade and invest. The market is a dangerous place to invest or trade. These two looks opposite, but the thing is, it's very interesting that you as a person who is a trader may have this belief change over in a matter even of on the same day or even the same week, you can have and hold this belief, these two uh, seemingly opposite beliefs, okay, at the same time. Okay, in, even in the same day or in the same in the same week. Okay, but if this is a constant belief, okay, if you see yourself constantly believe that the market is a safe place or constantly believe that the market is a dangerous place, it will have a very very profound impact on your trading because these beliefs uh, make you act in a certain way. Right. So if let's say, for example, you had a string of stop losses take you out, okay, you will likely feel that the market is a very dangerous place to invest. Right. That is a is that's an emotional, uh, what do you call that, uh, a response coming out from the most immediate uh, experience in the last maybe five to six trades. Right. But if you had the experience of having five to six trades, uh, winning trades, okay, you will have a totally different belief. Okay, that the market is a safe place. It's a, 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 a easy place to make money in the market. Okay, your beliefs will change. Okay, but the key thing is what you have as a consistent belief. Okay, if you have a good, consistent, correct trading belief, then it will constantly and consistently drive the actions that you take. So, so if it's a, it's a what do you call that a a, a a belief that enhances your trading, then the result of acting on that particular belief will have long term results in 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 your trading. Okay, so we will have to look at this because trading beliefs is about mindsets and what you think and how you see the market fundamentally. Okay, so we have two slides to talk about these trading beliefs. Okay, so let's talk about the mindset of successful traders. Okay, so what are uh, the six 
mindsets of tr successful traders. So as we go through these uh, six mindsets, so you can look back and reflect, okay, compare that to your mindset, okay, of how you think, okay, and how you react. Do you have these mindsets? Okay, if you don't have these mindsets, then you, you strive to have these mindsets of the successful traders because these are the models, okay? So um, it, it's, it's like modeling. If you follow the successful models, then your actions, will will be uh, what do you call that it will be sourced or is originate from these successful mindsets and your results will reflect uh, that of the uh, of the successful traders okay the first is to take responsibility for all your decisions and all outcomes okay you must accept responsibility for all the decisions that you make and all the come outcomes that uh, come out from those decisions okay that means the ability to accept risk which is the one of those first few slides that we had is very fundamental to this you must take responsibility okay you cannot say that it's the fault of the market or it's the fault of the big players okay or it's the fault of my broker he never gave me good advice and all that okay uh, all trader decisions are made by you okay and all the outcomes you must make the decision you must be the driver in your seat okay so that's a very important mindset of a successful trader Right, so that goes back to that particular point we had just now about the trading error. If you make trading decisions based on OPO, other people's opinion, okay, then you're not taking full responsibility for the decision because if you're wrong, who are you going to blame? You're going to blame that CNBC commentator, or you're going to blame that uh, research report that somebody put out, or you're going to blame that uh, Instagram posting or that the, or that tweet that you saw last night, okay? So you must be able to differentiate that. Right? That's number one. Number two is trading is going with the flow. Okay. That means you mu you must go with the flow of the market. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you have your drawdowns and you're going with the flow. You're not upset with it. Going with the flow is the means trading is um, easy and not emotionally disturbing. Okay. Of course, I uh, saying it is a lot easier to do, but it's a process that you have to go through. Okay. Everybody in in terms of reaching uh, this goal of trading with the flow and and uh and it can be a difficult uh, and very challenging uh process okay and i've gone through that as well okay um uh, i i retired from from my corporate work and and trading full time when you trade full time it's very very different okay it's so very different okay and uh, the thing about trading psychology and all that will come come in okay and even i Okay, after so many years in the business, when you're doing it seriously and you're doing it full time and doing it for a living, it's way, way different from trading on a part time basis and all that. It's very, very different. Okay, number one is your your the total trading psychology is so different. Okay, but it is a process that every trader has to go through, right? To become a good trader, you have to go through that pain of learning, right? So trading with the flow is one of the key things. Once you achieve the flow, that means you are able to go in and go out the market, whether it's a loss or a profit, with very little emotional content in your trading, then you are with the flow. Okay, that's what it means by being in the flow. Okay, the third is understand what the market, understand that the market is not the enemy or the threat. Okay, this is how we had some beliefs, right? Do you believe that it's the enemy or it's a frightening place uh, to be in? Okay, you need to understand that the market is not the enemy or the threat. Okay, the, who is the enemy? The enemy is actually ourselves. Okay, so we need to get out of our way. Okay, in trading, we need to get out of the way. As, as in the second point, we need to go with the flow. Okay, uh, the fourth point is to trade without fear. Okay, so that is, as we said, fear is the most predominant uh, and the most, uh, what do you call that, uh, 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 contributing factor to your trading errors. You need to trade without fear. Okay, and uh, it comes with uh, trading with uh, very little emotional discomfort. Okay, that's the key thing. The third is, this is very important as well, and we will go into the third, the next slide and you'll see this. Understand the probability, the probabilities and your edge, okay? So this comes from uh, doing your home homework, okay? Doing your methodology, okay? So we went through the methodology of the ABC. We went through the methodology of the momentum, Okay, we went through even one of those trading system by uh, Ryan Jones, which has had a fantastic uh, 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 money management and, and trading statistics. Okay, now the thing is this, if you don't have a trading system, you got to ask yourself, 
uh, why am I not implementing uh, ABC? I'm not saying that ABC is the only method to trade, okay? But you need to ask yourself, why are you not implementing an idea? Have you tested it out? Okay, a lot of time, a lot of people ask me the question of how good is the system and all that. But then when I ask them whether you have tested it themselves, they normally say no. Okay, so they they rather listen to the OPO again, other people's opinion. Okay, other people's opinion that the system is good or bad, but they never tested it. They never back tested it. Okay, they never went in to review their trades, taking some maybe it's a paper trade, or whatever. You never tested it for like last six months, or you've got use a system to back test the system. Okay, that you so you need to be able to know this because by understanding the probability, the confidence that you have, you have tested the system, you know the numbers, you know your edge, then you'll be able to implement that particular trading system. Okay, so no matter how good a trading system you buy it off the shelf, or some guru taught you that, or this guru could be the best trader in the world. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't matter because if you have not done it yourself and you don't understand the probability of this particular system or your edge, then you would have a problem. Okay, so that is very very important. Okay, uh, the last one is of course seeing the markets objectively. Right, so the markets never against you. The markets was never set up against you. Okay, the market moves as it moves. It's got global uh, uh, factors affecting it: supply, demand. Okay, uh, and even like you know the the coronavirus uh, the situation. All this you can never foresee, right? And and it's objective. It's it's got it's got nothing against you. Okay, it's the market don't favor you or the market don't actually go against you, right? So uh, you need to see the market as, as the reality of the market, okay? So if you put emotional content into your trading or you trade subjectively by using those emotional content, whether it's a hunch or you trade with emotions, then you're not seeing the markets objectively, okay? I hope that, that, that clears up, okay? And the next one is very important slide, okay? Um, and I would recommend you to, um, okay, next one, let me go to this. Hold on a second while well, I'll go to the next slide. Okay, somehow. I think you're on the drawing tool because your your, your cursor looks like it's on a, it's a uh, pencil. Yes, it is. Yeah, so how do I get out of this? Do I just normal? Mm, erase all drawings. Okay. Okay. Go to a. Uh, Seem to be stuck in do the you, drawing tool. Do, do you want to <laughs> click like space or some some button on your keyboard? Okay. Never mind. Let me try this again. Okay. Yeah. I think you have multiple screen. Uh, okay. So let's uh, go back to this. Okay. Okay. Then I'll have to get this out. Okay. Hopefully we're back. Shin, do you see the thing? Yes, correct. I see, but you have okay. to go to the next slide. Okay. <laughs> All right, yes. cool. So this is a very, very important slide. And this is the last slide, okay? And this is very important. Uh, we've taken some time, but please please bear with me on this, okay? Uh, I uh, After you learn this particular slide, I will encourage you to go and reference this book uh, by Mark Douglas. It's down here, okay? Mark Douglas, the book is Trading in a Zone. Master the Market with Confidence, Discipline, and Winning Attitude. This is one of the best books in on trading psychology, okay, that I have read, and I've read quite a number of books, okay? And uh, this is uh, what you want to understand, the five fundamental truths of trading. And these are, if you believe uh, uh, these five fundamental truths, okay, and your actions on the trading will follow uh, on a very very different path okay so the first fundamental truth anything can happen okay this is a fundamental belief you need to have anything can happen okay that means every time you go into a trade anything can happen okay regardless of how well studied or well researched or how your technical analysis how powerful your technical analysis is anything can happen Okay, so in terms of the top world-class poker players as well, they don't know what kind of cards will dealt will be dealt to them, what kind of hand will be dealt to them. Much like the same way as traders as well, we don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, uh, you nobody would have foreseen 
okay, uh, in uh, uh, beginning of 2020, before Chinese New Year, that the coronavirus situation will happen and the, the market is going to tank like that. Nobody, right? So anything can happen, okay? Not only what is going to happen in the five, next five minutes, even in the longer, longer term, the next one year, nobody knows, right? Okay, and if you can hold on to this belief that anything can happen, then your trading will be very different. Okay, the second one, which is related to the first one, is you don't need to know what is going to happen next in order to make money. Okay, now that seems to be like, wow, okay, you don't need to know what is going to happen next in order to make money. What does that mean? You have full confidence in your edge. We spoke about the edge and knowing the probability of the system. Okay, you know that even though I may not know what's going to happen next, I know that if I do and follow my trading system for the next 20 trades, okay, because I have an edge in it, okay, I will make money. It's very similar. How does a casino operate, or how does, say, a company like Sports Total or those totalizer uh, uh, companies? Uh, what it can operate, okay? It operates on a long-term assumption, okay? Although the payouts can be quite high, 60, 70%, they know at the long-term, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, long-term, they have the edge. The casino has an edge, right? Las Vegas has an edge. Those people who operate casinos have an edge. So they're not afraid that you make money, okay? If your 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 casino customers, you come and take money from them, you make a lot, you make millions. They're not afraid that you take money from that. They're only afraid that you don't come back, right? So in the same way, you need to tweak your trading to be like that, okay? You have the edge. So it doesn't matter if you make a few losses in the next couple of trades because you know next 10, 20 trades, you have this particular edge and this edge will always work for you. So, so that is very, very important, okay? So you are not invested in every single uh, singular trade. Yeah, you, you don't really matter to you. Okay, okay, and that leads to the number three. Okay, number three, there is a random distribution between the wins and losses for any given set of variables that define an edge. Okay, that sounds like a very big mouthful. What is saying that you you have a winning formula? Okay, say for example, you have a winning formula that you know that in twenty trades, these are your statistics. Okay, but you don't know which occurrence will come first. You don't know whether the first trade is going to be a win or a loss. You don't know whether the second trade will be a win or a loss, which is a function of the first two beliefs. Okay, But you know that in 20 trades, you will have that particular edge. You just don't know what is the sequence. Okay, It can be a win, 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 loss, loss. It can be a loss, 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 win, win, win. You don't know the sequence. Okay. And you don't really worry about that because you are in it for the long term. Okay, so those three beliefs up there is fundamentally, of course, also connected. The last, the sorry, not the last one. The 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 fourth one is an edge is nothing more an indication of a higher probability of one thing happening over the other. Okay, that's why the edge is so important. Right. So it's it's basically you know in a set of occurrences you will at the end of it make money. Okay, now, that's what it means. And the last one, every moment in the market is unique. Okay, uh, just because that's why uh, in a lot of these uh, uh, research reports, and they always say, you know, uh, the past does not necessarily reflect the future. All the mutual funds that you buy, they always have this disclaimer, you know, past performance is not an indicator of uh, uh, the future performance of the fund and all that, because they also realize in the market, every single moment is unique, okay? So um, these are the five fundamental truths from this fantastic book by Mark Douglas. I find it so useful. And uh, <clears throat> I find that if you can uh, honestly uh, embrace these five fundamental truths, okay, you will, uh, you find that you will find that your trading will lose a lot of its emotional discomfort. Okay, but of course you need to have the edge. It's very important to have an edge and the edge can only come from you experiencing the system and getting the statistics out of the system. Okay, so um, this is the last slide. Okay, it's, uh, we have like uh, gone through a lot of time uh, in doing all this. Uh, so now we open uh, to uh, question and answers. So Shane, do we have a, a lot of questions coming up from the audience? 
Uh, it's time for you to ask right. questions. We have some time for questions. Yeah, we got some questions on the screen right now. So the first question is asked by our friend here, William. How do yes, we William. ascertain how much capital is adequate to engage in trading? Mm. Okay. Of course, it depends on uh, how much uh, the sizes that you are, you are willing to do. Okay. Um, at least, at least for me, uh, I need to have uh, to my comfort. Let's say, for example, I'm trading palm oil. Okay. So palm oil uh, margin requirements about five thousand. Okay. Uh, normally, um, I will have uh, fifteen to twenty thousand to trade one lot of palm oil. I know it's very conservative, right? I'm very conservative. Okay. I have lots of lots of uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, capital, enough capital to do that. But if you have, let's say, for example, um, you don't have to follow me, okay? Uh, if you have less capital, then you either move down to a, uh, a shorter time frame. You may have to move down to, say, uh, instead of trading daily charts, you trade hourly charts, or you trade 15-minute uh, charts, or you day, day trade, okay? Uh, so those time frames are less risk. So um, with less risk, then uh, your stop losses are tighter. You don't take that much risk per trade, so you can have less capital. Okay, but still have a lot more comfort than than is norm normally necessary. Okay, this may not necessary. Um, 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 so a lot of people actually trade a lot more aggressive than is required. But at least I think the minimum minimum is at least need to have double the margins you require per contract. That'd be a good starting point. I hope that answers the question. Shane, hmm. back to you. All right. Sure. The the next question is. What do you mean when you say seeing the markets objectively? This is by Jason Wong. Mm. So um, seeing the market objectively, basically you don't inject your 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 views into the market. Okay, you trade your system, of course. Your 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 trading system, uh, whether it's fundamental or technical, will of course give you an indication, right? So you follow that indication without uh, the emotional content. Okay, so if let's say for example you're trading the ABC system, and then there's an ABC setup and it's a buy. Okay, so what the ABC says is that basically based on that, then the momentum is up, it's broken up, that breached that particular point, and you have a buy setup and you go in. Okay, so you are being objective number one because of your system, you don't have emotional content. Okay, the other thing is seeing the market as it really is. Okay, number one, the market is not against you, right? Against you means that means it's got nothing against you. Right? It's not an evil thing, or it's it's not something to come and save you as well, right? So um, uh, so you see it that way. Okay, so it's very objective. It's uh, it's um, you see the true reality, and and a lot of times the true reality of seeing uh, the the market is through the price action. That's why a lot of traders go into price action because that seems to be the purest form of objectivity. So it they look at the prices and how the prices react, they will act accordingly. Okay, that seems to be a movement in terms of price action type of uh, trading systems. I hope that answers your question. Sure, I think it certainly does. The next question is by Kok Hearn. What do you think about algor uh, algorithm trading mm. since it mm. eliminates all human emotions and relies mm. on computational data? Mm. Okay, uh, I trade algos as well. Okay, uh, algos can be different type. Of course, it can be aut uh, uh, full automation. Um, or okay, so even though I I I, I teach the ABC and uh, and all that, um, that's manual trading. That means you look at a chart and then you trade. Okay, uh, I do use algo as well. So I have a uh, algo generation uh, generating ideas for me, and I trade. Now, what I I feel is it even though you have an algo, right? If your algo goes into a uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, drawdown. Okay, the human being. You know, because who controls the algo, right? The algo is also controlled by human being. Whether you want to switch on that particular algo strategy to let it run or not, it still depends on the human being, right? So when your your algo goes into a drawdown, do you switch it off or not? And say, hey, you know, maybe this algo is lousy. Okay, you don't believe in the statistic that algo give you in terms of the backtest. Of course, in terms of backtest, some some backtest, uh, some algos may not last the long term because market uh, uh, factors change or market conditions change, right? But then the human factor can even come into algo. But one of the most powerful things of uh, algo 
especially in executing. Okay, and I find it helps me because all my orders are already parked there. Eh? I don't uh, when the prices come to a certain price point, I don't need to like hesitate on that it, because it'll be done. It'll be automatically done for me. So half the battle is gone, but doesn't mean that trading psychology is not an important part because you as a human being can still switch off the algo. Okay, you can still question your algo the same thing as you question your technical analysis system. Right, so but algo does help, okay. In uh, but it's not a magic bullet. Hope the answer. So does your does your algo automatically adjust the right size for you, and to help you uh, it, to the algo give you uh, a signal it, or it, mm. it immediately help you to enter the order and close the positions. Okay, there are algos that can do position sizing for you as well if you if you use it. Yeah, it can automate uh, position sizing to set up the optimal uh, sizing as well. It can be, it can do that. Uh, it can do it manually. Okay, that means uh, at day start of day you determine, uh, you you already tweak the parameters for the size. Okay, uh, you can do it both ways, but the algos can do uh, position sizing as well. Can 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 it help you to place orders immediately? Or you have you just generate signal and you have to place your order yourself. Okay, if your if your algo is uh, integrated with the execution system, yes, you can even uh, execute the, the order for you, and um and that's ideal if you can execute for you so that you don't really have to worry. You just monitor that the orders that is gone in uh, is uh, correct. Okay, as it executes, yes, uh, algos can do execution as well. Mm, all right, yeah. The next question is by Richie which is uh, the casino designed the game rules or the payouts to have an edge over the players. Mm -hmm. So, but in the market, how do we design our plans to have the edge over the market? Because we have to follow the market rules and not our own. Mm. Your edge comes from your, okay, either it's a technical analysis uh, signals that you have, okay, that uh, or a fundamental system that you have, so um, how do you know your edge? You need to know the statistics of your particular system, right? So let's say, for example, if you backtest uh, 10 years data, okay, uh, and then you look at what is the result, what is the equity curve like, what is the drawdown, all those statistics must be, you know, uh, in your fingertips. So then you are confident that you, for this particular uh, trading system, you know that this is the win-loss ratio, this is the uh, win percentage, and you have confidence that, uh, 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 of course, all the other statistics apply as well. So from there, you get your your edge, right? So you uh, mathematically you have counted that from this particular system, you can get this particular edge. Just like the casinos, of course, they have uh, mathematical um, great mathematicians. Every game is already pre-calculated the payouts and all that. Uh, some of them, maybe like a game of Bakara, sometimes they don't even need to charge you commission, but they know, okay, by, by the banker's edge of taking a bit off. Uh, every time the you know the bankers uh, uh, what you call that win, uh, you take off some commission. Those there already is a winning edge for them. So in terms of trading system, you need to have that particular edge. Okay, that means in the long term, your your expectation is positive. I hope that answers the question. Mm. Yeah, certainly is. the The next question is asked by Iqbal. How do we avoid selling early? That means uh, this is profit taking, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy. Closing the position is the toughest part for us to do. Yes. Yes. Um, it does go back number one uh, to also uh, again your your edge and what is your win loss ratio and what's your profit. Okay. Um, let's say for example in some of the systems that I have that I trade, I know what is my profit target. Okay, I know statistically across, uh, say, uh, 2,000 over trades, uh, real uh, actual trades in the system, this is the profit target. So I put in a profit target. So I do have a profit target. I do have a risk uh, parameter. If uh, that's the loss, that's the stop loss, uh, uh, I will take. But I also have a profit target, right? So it's good to have a profit target uh, to do that. Okay, uh, sometimes in terms of, uh, let's say, if you don't trade um, an algo, uh, sometimes it's also good that let's say for example if the market has moved over a certain period of time but has not reached your your profit uh, levels okay let's say your profit taking is say 50 points and it's gone like to 40 something points right you may want to move your stops okay your stop loss to either break even or or take one times your profit you know so that gives you a bit of the psychological uh, comfort okay uh, you can tweak that and of course you can test that as well if you do that 
uh, over the system, does it work for you or it works against you, right? Uh, but then that is to gain the psychological advantage, knowing that after you've gone a certain amount of trade going for you, then this trade will become a lost trade. You, the worst thing is to have a trade that goes well for you and then suddenly turn and now takes you out, you know, stop loss, right? That feels really lousy in terms of trading psychology, right? So you may be able to tweak that a bit. Right? So there's no magic formula, but if you have a statistics of that particular profit target that's consistently being achieved, then you can use it as your uh, profit target to put there so that you know that you don't take your profits too soon. I hope that answers your the question. All right. Well. Yeah, thank you so much, David. It, is, it has always been a pleasure to learn from you. And every time I host you on our webinar, I always find it very, uh, you know, in uh, very you know a lot of information for us to take and with action plan on what we can do next you know in our trading journey all right so uh thank you so much david so let me take back the presenter control uh to show you thank my you. screen we talked about next webinar so the next webinar uh is going to be on this malay session so it is on a pengurusan modal dan risiko dalam pasaran niaga hadapan so it's happening on uh, 10th of uh, december it's a thursday 8 30 to 10 o'clock so we have just given you the registration link so if you uh you know if you find this topic of interest to you please uh, hurry up to register because we can only host a limited number of people online so uh, last but not least, we also have a post webinar survey for you and for those of you who help us to answer the survey, we will pick six of you who answer our survey will walk away with a touch and go e-wallet reload pin worth 50 ringgit. I'm sure that many of you have already won that before already. So, uh, but we still have more to give away. So the survey will be launched after this webinar and we will also be sent to you via email. So lucky winners will be reached out within a week. So not only you join our webinar uh, without any charge, we will also give <laughs> some of you here uh, some money to spend. All right. So thank you so much for supporting our uh, webinar so far. So we hope that you find these uh, sessions very helpful. And uh, this is this is uh, the last sessions that David have for this year. <laughs> so we hope that, uh, you know, we hope to have David back uh, with us next year to share with us more. Okay. So yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, God willing. Okay. So thank you uh, very much, everybody. And uh, may you all have a pleasant rest of the day. Bye-bye. Uh, Thanks, David. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah.